Welcome to this next lesson and this one is all about bump and how you can use it within the Pixar surface. So another great feature about the Pixar surface is that each lobe comes with its own bump parameter and this really gives you the artist a wide range of creative and physical controls when it comes to adding depth and relief to your materials. So for instance here under the speculars under the advanced tab here you can see you've got a bump input and you have them for these three speculars. You have it for iridescence, you have it for fuzz and you also have it for glass for instance if you want to add bump and relief to your glass objects. But just for the minute I'm just going to show you here under the globals tab you have this bump here and this is your global bump for your entire material and this is what we're going to be looking at first. Okay so let's start by having a look at how you apply a bump map and I've gone ahead here and I've just dropped down this Pixar bump node and if I just take the result out and I plug it into our bump normal you can now see that what we've got is we've got this embossed Renderman logo on the front of our orange teapot. Now let me just run you through some of these parameters here within the bump node. The scale here is how much bump is applied. So if I take this down to 0.1 you can see that it lessens the amount and I can also go into negative numbers as well so if you want to reverse the effect that your bump map is having you can either go positive or negative numbers with these. So next option here is input bump and so this allows you to plug in a Pixar texture node but I'm using this file name parameter here and I've gone ahead and I'm using this black and white map. Now if you solo a Pixar bump node you'll see that it actually looks like a normals map but it actually isn't. It is a solid black and white. It's just that Render Man displays a bump map as a world normals map. So unsolo that. Now this next few options here deal with atlases and whether you're coming in from Mudbox or Mari so they handle your UDIMs. So this bump manifold parameter here will allow you to tile and rotate your maps and then you've got a few other extra sort of advanced options here and you can actually start to layer up bump maps over other bump maps by daisy chaining them together and that's where these options here come in handy. Now I'm just going to show you one other little thing here which is you've got this blur parameter and sometimes if you just make a simple black and white map the edges of your bump map can be quite harsh and if you want quite a smooth transition with your bump map this blur parameter can actually be quite useful. So I'm just going to go ahead here I'm just going to add a very tiny amount of blur to my black and white map and you can see by doing that it actually really intensifies the um, scale of your bump map. So if I just go ahead here and reduce this scale down to something like 0 0.02 you can now see that what we're starting to get is this quite smooth transition with our bump map. So we've still got this relief coming out but what I've done by blurring this black and white map by 0 0.02 you can see that I've actually smoothed it out and you can see by turning this back to zero we then get back to our sharp edges on our bump map. So this blur actually can sometimes be overlooked but is actually very useful at times. Okay so let me unsolo that and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you work with a normal map and it's pretty much the same so again I've gone ahead here and I've created a Pixar normal map node and I'm going to plug that into our bump normal and you can see here that I've got this kind of noisy texture and if I just solo it you can see what the normals look like. Now for this normal map you've got pretty much the same parameters as what you do for a bump map. This is the scale of the bump, this is where you plug in a Pixar texture node, this is the path to your texture that you currently want to use this bump overlay we're going to show that in a minute. So this next drop down is quite useful and it allows you to control the orientation of your normals map and then here is where you set whether your normals map is open GL or it's a direct X and you can also have other options to invert it and flip the X and Y's. And again here this is where your atlases are and now here this is where your manifold is. So if I just come here and unsolo that. Okay so if I right click here on manifold and then what I want to do is create this Pixar Manifold 2D and what that'll do is it'll drop down this Manifold node which will allow me to do a number of different things. Okay so sometimes when you drop down this Pixar Manifold node you actually need to restart the IPR. So I'm just going to come here and I'm going to restart it. Okay so now that's running again. So now what I can do with the Manifold is I can rotate the texture here I can then determine how many times it's repeating with this scale S and scale T and I can also offset it using the offset S and the offset T. But what I want to do is put it back to naught. I know that I kind of will need to replicate it 10 times. So I'm going to do it 10 times on the S and the U and 10 times on the V. 
now what I'm starting to get is this orange skin normal map. Now, I promised you a minute ago that I was going to show you how you can overlay a bump map over the top of a normal map. And if I come here to where it says bump overlay, and if I middle mouse drag my bump and I drop it onto my bump overlay, now what you can start to see is that I've layered up my normal map here, which is my orange normal map texture. And then here I've got my Render Man logo over the top as well. And that's all controlled within this Pixar normal map. So if I want to come back to where we were before with our nice soft Render Man logo, I can then control that within the Pixar bump node. And if I want to come back and control how much of this orange normal map I've got, I do that within this Pixar normal map. And then I can then come here and then reduce the number of times it's tiling. So you've got really interesting control over being able to daisy chain bump maps into normal maps and normal maps over the top of other normal maps. So what you can effectively do is you can have a bump map that is giving you large scale of breakup and then you can then apply a bump map over the top of that which is giving you the finer breakup of your material as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a slightly more enhanced version where I'm going to demonstrate how you can get the bumps going on various different lobes. Okay, so if I just go ahead here and move over to this Goodwood tab, and if I select the parts of the teapot, and I'll just go ahead here and apply this wood shader that I've created. Now what I'll do is I'll break this down for you piece by piece. And you'll see that the way that I've created this material is that I've really thought about how it would be created in the real world. So you would start with a raw piece of wood that has been cut and has relief and bump to it. And then someone's come along and they varnished it over the top with a clear coat. So let me go ahead here and I'm going to turn off the clear coat. And I'm also going to turn off the primary specular as well. So what you can see here is that I've got this base wood material. And you can see here that under the advanced tab in my defuse channel, I've added this bump map and you can see that here if I solo it for you. And this bump map here is driving the defuse bump. And if I come back here and I apply a small bit of specular to it, and you can see here that I'm also using the same normal map to drive this specular breakup as well. So what you end up with is this bare wood material that has a slight reflection to it. Now, this is where the magic comes into it. If I just shut this down and I show you what the clear coat is. So if you imagine that this is how the wood has been prepared when you buy it from a shop, you bring it home and then what you want to do is you want to put a varnish over the top. And I do this here with this clear coat. Now, I'm just going to go ahead here and increase the edge color. And I'll show you why this has now changed its color. And because the way the clear coat works, is it has these two factors here. It has this layer thickness, which is how thick the clear coat varnish over the top of your model is. And I also have this tint here as well. And again, I'm also plugging in another bump map. But for this bump map, I'm not actually using the wood. I'm actually using these scratches here that I've created. Okay, so let me go ahead here and show you exactly what's going on with this material. So this first picture here just shows you the defuse and this primary specular. And you can see here that I've input a roughness map as well. So this next picture here shows you what happens when the clear coat is applied. And you can see here that now it's starting to look like it's a lacquered and varnished wood. And so this next picture here is what happens when you start to add color to this absorption tint parameter. So this effectively allows you to apply a color to the clear coat varnish of your wood. And you can also see here that I've got a bit of breakup going on. So you've got this darker color here, and then here you've got this lighter color. And I've also done it along the edges as well. And this is controlled with this layer thickness. And I've painted this map inside of Mari where it controls how thick the clear coat is. And wherever it's darker within your breakup map, the more absorption tint comes through. You then start to get less of that clear coat coming through. So this last picture here shows you what happens when I've added this scratch map to the bump parameter of my clear coat. So this is really how the wood would look when you bring it home from the shop. I've then gone ahead and I've clear coated it with a colored varnish. 
and then over time my wood has then become scratched. So I hope this lesson has been inspirational to you about how to think about your bump maps in a slightly different way, where not just to apply one map over the entire object, but think about how they are actually constructed in the real world. And once you do so, you can start to think about materials like carbon fibers and wet roads and rocks and bumpy scratch plastic through to damaged glass. And you also have things like lacquered metals and rusty painted signs. And when you're not being based in reality, the number of creative sort of motion graphic style applications for various materials is infinite as well. So I hope this has been useful and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye.